his first reaction was an absolute, what can be called a, a, a reaction that is to be expected in a son. He just he said, I will murder the man who has killed my father. I will murder the man who has killed my father. That was Harilal's instant reflexive reaction. The second son, Manila, and the third son, Ramdas, who were with the father over different periods of time and who had uh, not only not rebelled against the father, but who, who had imbibed his, their father's ethic uh, on non-violence and ahimsa, their reaction was different. It is not what can be called the spontaneous reaction of a son. It was a considered reaction of a philosophical and uh, um, a conceptual legacy, and their reaction was that the man who has shot our father should not be hanged, because capital punishment was known as the standard punishment for murder. Their reaction was a considered reaction. It had gone through the filter of uh, philosophical training from their father. And they appealed in writing to the head of state, to the governor general of India, saying that they do not want Godsi to be hanged. Uh, their appeal was not accepted by the governor general, by the prime minister and the home minister. None of them could accept the, the, the appeal. And Rathuram Godse was the first person and his colleague, associate, Apti, was the second person to be hanged in free India. This is an irony of ironies because there is absolutely no doubt that Gandhiji would not have wanted anybody who has assaulted him to be punished, much less hanged. It was a horrible murder. And Harila's reaction is important because it just shows the horror of that act. But Manilal and Ramdas, by saying what they did, they went one step further to sublimate that reaction and to say that an evil act cannot be mitigated by another act which is also fundamentally violent. Even then I remember that in my mind I did not arraign my assailants. This is extraordinary. He is in his mid-twenties and he is being beaten black and blue and he says, I knew in my mind I did not arraign my assailants. And then this news spreads and the British government tells the government of Natal to prosecute the assailants and the Attorney General Harry Escom meets Gandhi and says, please give me a complaint against those who I see. And Gandhi with all his bandages says, I have no intention of complaining against those who assail me. Because, and these are his words, I have no doubt that they did what they did out of a misapprehension of my intentions. Just imagine, this is his non-violence. And it started in South Africa. The violence has become chronic and endemic in our times. And there is no uh, ready rule no ready reckoner about what is violence, what is non-violence. One has to forge a non-violent reaction to every situation afresh, afresh. Every provocation to ahimsa from himsa has to be responded to afresh. And in no way is Gandhi a permanent teacher of a method. He has told us that violence is evil. How it should be resisted, 
depends entirely on the circumstances, place by place, situation by situation. And he is not judging us by his standards. He is judging us, I think, by our own uh, living response to every moment and every situation in solidarity with the principle of non-violence. He has shown us the principle. He has not laid down a code. 